Hi everyone, Nigel Short, the English GM, once jokingly commentated on the King's Gambit, saying, The main advantage of the King's Gambit is there are so many reputations that Black can't play them all at once. And he's got this problem, he has to decide which one to go for, and then he loses on time. The real takeaway from this quote is that there really aren't refutations to the King's Gambit, because Black loses at the end. And I have for you a game where Black plays some of the most popular defensive lines and still fails. So the year is 1964. Bobby Fischer, who is 21 years old, is playing white in a game against William Neiman. And this game was a simul where Fischer was playing 50 opponents at the same time. And Fischer still managed to produce this King's Gambit masterpiece where he won in just 16 moves after a queen sacrifice. The game went e4, e5, f4, the move that characterizes the king's gambit. The best way to continue is to accept the gambit, which is what Fisher's opponent did, which e takes f4. Remember, in the king's gambit, we are giving up a pawn for a stronger center and quicker development. Black no longer has control over the d4 square. Also, don't forget that generally the ideal position we would like to achieve in the King's Gambit is one where we have a pawn on d4 and where we capture on f4 with our bishop. If we were able to achieve such a scenario, we would simply have a stronger position. In the position we have here, white can play knight f3 or bishop c4. Fisher preferred bishop c4 which is what was played here. The three most common replies here are knight f6, d5, and queen h4 in that order. Fisher's opponent played d5, the second most popular move. Black is willing to give up the pawn for the ability to open up the diagonal for the light square bishop and quicker development. Technically, in this position, playing e takes d5 is okay, but the best move is bishop takes d5, which is what Fisher played. There's two ways for black to continue. Knight f6, the most popular reply, and that was what was played here. And there's also queen h4 check, which computers like just slightly more. So Fisher's opponent played knight f6, and Fisher replied with knight c3, continuing his development. And uh, black replied with bishop b4, attacking the knight and clearing the way for black's king to castle king's side. Fisher played knight f3, a move that also clears the way for castling. And both sides did decide to castle on their very next move. So castle king's side, castle king's side. Here, black has a tough decision to make. I prefer the move knight takes d5. Black ended up playing bishop takes c3. This move appears to leave black a little underdeveloped, especially since after Fisher captures, a diagonal will be opened up for the dark squared bishop. So Fisher played d takes c3, and at the right moment, Fisher will have the option of capturing on f4 with the bishop. Fisher's opponent played c6. He wants to be able to develop his light squared bishop without our bishop capturing on b7. Fisher moved the bishop back to c4. And of course, with the bishop on the a a g a diagonal, the pressure on f7 continues. Queen b6 check was played. With black being behind on in development, exchanging the queens would have been a slightly better idea for black, but black decides to keep the queens on the board. Fisher played king h1, getting out of the check. And Fisher's opponent played an interesting move here. And... A move I believe was a big mistake. He played knight takes e4. Now when you have three pieces yet to be developed ten moves into the game you probably don't want to go pawn hunting. This move is simply dangerous. Fisher plays queen e1. The idea is to stop knight f2 check where Fisher would be forced to sacrifice the rook. And Fisher's opponent played Rook e1. Although this looks dangerous because black is putting the rook on the same file as our queen, 
there is simply no way to take advantage of it. And Fisher was certainly aware of the line that would be played here. Bishop takes f4. All of white's minor pieces have been developed, while black has only developed one minor piece. And in this position, black played another move, which I believe was a big mistake. He played knight d6, attacking the queen. And we can see that the knight protects the rook, and the knight also attacks the bishop. The problem with this move, it just, it simply does not work. And Fisher decided that his attack on the black king is so powerful that he can just let his queen go and play the move. Bishop takes d6 and black happily captured the queen with rook takes e1. White captured the rook with Rook eight takes e1, threatening checkmate on e8. Black played bishop d8, stopping the immediate checkmate. And Fisher played knight g5, threatening the f7 pawn. And it's only here on move 15 that Fisher's opponent decided to develop his knight with knight a6. But it's a little too late for that now because Fisher played a brilliant move. Rook takes f7. Here, Fisher's opponent had enough and resigned. The position is absolutely hopeless for black. The immediate threat is rook f8 checkmate. The black rook would not be able to capture our rook because the king is in double check by both the rook and the bishop. The best line is a forced checkmate in 7. Let's have a quick look at it. King h8, temporarily stopping checkmate. Bishop e5, believe it or not, the best move for black in this position is queen f2. A lot of this line will involve black offering us a piece for free, just to delay a checkmate by one move. Certainly we will be able to capture the queen and play out the completely winning position, but we can force maiden 6 from here with bishop takes g7 check, king g8 only move. Rook takes d7 check, the only legal move in this position. Queen f7, again offering the queen for free. From here, there's a few ways to force maiden 4. The most straightforward is just to capture the queen with our rook. Rook takes f7. Knight f4. The position is so bad for black that, again, the only way to stop checkmate is to offer us a piece for free. Here, what black is doing is... He's stopping us from playing bishop d3, followed by bishop takes h7 checkmate. But we can simply take the knight. c takes b4, rook f8. And here we can play the move bishop h6, threatening rook takes f8 checkmate. And if black plays rook takes f7, we have rook e8 checkmate. The f7 rook is pinned by our c4 bishop. This was the quickest way to checkmate. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this game. If you have, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment.